going to be on API gateway in GCP. So why do we need an API gateway? So let's say you're creating a multi service based application or a microservice based application and you're using multiple services in GCP like cloud function, cloud run, and you want to coalesce all these to form one particular interface, then the tool that you would use is basically the API gateway. So let's say you don't have an API gateway and you would use multiple services like cloud function and cloud run. The problem with that approach is let's say you want to have a security mechanism, which is basically same for all these services, then you would have to implement them independently and it basically becomes a headache. So what Google has come up with something called as an API gateway. So an API gateway is basically a interface between the front end that is basically the consumers of the API and the implementation of the API on the other hand. So let's say you are creating an API. Your only task would be to just create the business functionality and to let things like the scaling, monitoring and the security be implemented by the API gateway. So it basically helps in decoupling things like scaling, monitoring uh, and implementing security features and the basic development of the business logic itself. So that's the primary use why you would want to use something like an API gateway. Create an API gateway in GCP is basically a three step process. First, you would need to create something called as an API. Once you've created an API, you need to create something called as an API config. The API config would contain all the configuration to the backend services. It's basically an Swagger file which will have all the information that is required for the API gateway to connect to the backend. After you've created the API config, which is basically just downloading a Swagger file, the third step that you would do is create an API, create a gateway. So the gateway is basically a connection to the API config. So let's actually start implementing it in real time. Similarly, you can also add keys to your API gateways. This is something that I'll explain it, explain to you in a different lecture altogether. Now to create an API gateway, you can go to your GCP console and click on API gateway. So the first thing you need to do, like I showed you in the PPT is create an API. You can just give any name you like. So let me just give my first and I'll give an API, app, API ID. So I'll just give this as API gateway itself. And I'll click on create. So while the API is being created, let me show you the backend that I'm going to connect this API gateway to. I have created two services. One is a cloud function and the other is a cloud run. So they're basically just hello world applications and I would be using both of them to connect to this particular API gateway. So if I go to the main console, so I have created one cloud function and it's called function three. And it has, a, and this is the URL for that particular cloud function. Similarly, I've also created a cloud run container based service. So if you go to cloud run, So this is basically the cloud run service that I have created. Let me just click on this. And this is the endpoint to connect to that particular cloud run service. So once I have created these two backend services, what I need to do is create a swagger file, which will connect these two services to our API gateway. So this is basically the swagger file I have created. I have created two parts. One is basically a hello world from the cloud function, the other one is from the cloud run. So it just returns a basic hello world as the output. And the important thing here is basically the address which it's connected to. So this is basically the URL for the cloud function. And this is the URL for the cloud run. So these are the same URLs that I showed you previously. And the other important thing is basically the title should be the API ID of the API, of the API that you have created. So these are the three things you should be concerned with the title, the address and the path. So let me just close this 
And let me see if the API has been created. Let me just go back to the API gateway. So you can see that the API has been created. Now the second thing is to upload the config that I created. So let me just click on this new API that I have. Click on the configs tab and just upload the config. So this is basically the same YAML file or the Swagger file that I just created. So I just open this and I'll just give a display name and a service account. It'll ask you to deploy to a particular gateway. Now, because we haven't created any gateway yet, we will do this maybe later. So I don't need to worry about this. So let me just click on upload. So the gateway is basically the third part of this. So we don't need to worry about this currently. So let me just upload the config. So once the config is created, the third thing you need to do is create a gateway. So just go click on the gateway tab, click on create gateway. You can just give any display name. So let me just give it as API gateway again. The location where you want your gateway to be in. So I just click on US central one and the config. So here, because I have already created a config in my previous step, I just need to select that. Okay, it's still not showing. Let me just refresh this. Click on create gateway. Okay, so API gateway. Mission central. So let me just click on the. So this is basically the config that I created in my previous step. And just click on create. So this takes a little while to create. Okay, so once this has been created, you can just click on the API gateway. You can just click on select this URL and just open your browser and paste it. So remember the endpoint we had given for, I mean the path that we had given for the cloud function was hello from cloud function. And similarly for the cloud run, service the end the path that we had given was hello from cloud run so if i just click on this so you can see that you have a hello world that is re returned for this particular endpoint so similarly if you have the cloud run service should also return the same hello world so there you have it you have created one particular endpoint that is the api gateway endpoint that is connecting to two different aws services so this is basically the endpoint that is returned from the cloud function and this is the endpoint that basically connects to the cloud run and returns the hello world from the cloud run i hope this was useful for you if you have any issues just please comment below and please subscribe to this channel thank you